Good afternoon, everybody. Today, I'm chatting with Vijay Kartigesu from Swarmio Media. In this interview, we talk about the future of gaming, how telcos play into this strategy, and we get into Vijay's deal, Swarmio Media, which I think is worth a look if you're bottom feeding, looking for some stocks that have been beat up that have big promise. Swarmio Media is a gaming platform that gives gamers access to a payment solution that they previously didn't have. This is important because for most gamers in the developing world, they don't have access to credit cards. But most people in the developing world do have access to a phone and they can add cash to that phone by going to their local store with cash, paying it and having money added to their phone which now thanks to Swarmio creates a payment solution where gamers can then take that money that they've added onto their phone and use it to buy in game credits. All right, everybody enjoy the interview. VJ, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for having me. Right, so VJ, I'd like to start with what's happening in the telecom world. Uh, you and I have uh, chatted uh, quite a bit offline over the last month. Uh, specifically about Swarmio, but the conversations often bre breach out to things like what's happening with the big picture in the telecom world. Uh, we see things like Elon Starlink. Uh, we generally don't need phone numbers to the extent that we used to. Um, and uh, then we see, you know, Amazon and Google even sort of getting into the internet provider game. Uh, where do you see the future for telecoms? What do they need to be successful? Yeah, so telcos, uh, I call them, they're at the crossroads now. They have to make a decision whether they want to become a pure utility, you know, just running cables and maintaining cables and let other people do the services, or they want to keep what they were before. If you look at it 10 years ago or 20 years ago, if you think about a conferencing, you wouldn't think about Google or Zoom. You would think about at and or some other, other telco names, right? So they lost movies to Netflix, they lost music to Spotify of the world, they lost this video conferencing and everything to Zoom and Microsoft and Google. And they even lost, as you mentioned, voice to WhatsApp and all the other people taking all the voice. So telcos now have to uh, think about how to come back at this. And uh, you know, I, I you know, give a good example, I have three kids, they play game, they are on the, on the net all the time. You go and ask them, hey, who's your telco provider? They have no idea, they don't care. This is the reality for the telco. So they lost this emotional connection to the digital natives and the millennial generation. So they, they have to make a decision if they wanna come back, this is where our, our pitch is. They wanna come back and get connected and offer more services to, uh, so then gaming is the world. So this is why we are pushing the telcos that they should really look at gaming as an opportunity to get back into the game or they make a decision let other people do gaming i'll just go and maintain cables so this is a huge decision uh telcos do want to become that powerful player again and because of 5g is coming in 5g is actually giving them even more challenges because until 4g they had some control over the telecommunication network with 5g they are even losing that and i don't want to go into the technical details of what uh, 5G and all these things, but the telcos are losing control over the 5G because the web scalers, Amazon and Google and Microsoft, they are going to be running the 5G core as well. So this is going to be a huge challenging period for telcos and they have an opportunity, but I don't know whether they will actually grab at it. So that that's sort of uh, a lot of our, our audiences here in Canada. Rogers back in the day, they decided that they were going to sort of launch their own Netflix style service. I don't know if you remember that. It was called Show Me. Um, and I, I think Bell came out with Crave. Rogers came out with Show Me. Rogers ultimately threw in the towel on uh, Show Me, decided that they couldn't compete in that space. Crave still around today. Um, you, you think that, it, that, that this is a, a, a long shot for telecom companies to just find these sort of value added services going out and, you know, becoming libraries of content or producing their own content to keep sticky users? It is a, it is a, it's a history. If you look at the history, uh, look at these telcos, they have the money, they have technology, they have engineers, really smart engineers in there, but it's the culture. Uh, if you look at Amazon, they used to be a retail kind of an online bookstore become, became the largest cloud service provider, you know, now challenging all the telcos. 
where telcos at that time, not whether it's not Canada, not even in the US, the big telcos had all the power to become. They used to be, if you look at Bell uh, or uh, uh, the, the whole Bell Labs in the US, they created all the technologies. Telcos actually innovated at the communication technology to make us come here, but then they just, they just stop. And now, so this is the culture. Um, they have the they have everything they need to come back, but can they do it? It's like most of the time, it's all about uh, wait and see. Uh, you know, this 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 modern millennial generation, they don't really uh, you know uh, uh, work with wait and see model. They just need services now. They need to be the first one. You need to compete with them. You need to have quality. Uh, so all of these challenges. Telcos can move that fast. So that's the problem. That's the huge cultural challenge they have. Uh, they need to overcome that. Uh, okay, so switching gears here, uh, something that sort of popped up in the news in the gaming world is that Saudi Arabia is really taking a run at being the global leader uh, in gaming and esports. They've released a, nat uh, a, a national gaming and esports strategy. Uh, do you think that this is, is, is a big enough economy that a country like Saudi Arabia should be after becoming the, the world's gaming uh, or the, the world's global gaming hub? Uh, what's, what's, what, how, how big of an economy is, is this for a country like uh, Saudi Arabia? Size? It, is, it is not just economy. If you think about this is the entertainment and the media. So the future of entertainment, future of social media is going to be gaming. And that is given. And if you think about, you know, you have kids, I have kids. What do they watch today? Twitch, YouTube, TikTok. Mm -hmm. right? They don't watch TV. They don't watch. Uh, this I, is I, 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 I have a friend who avoided a funeral last weekend because he was doing a 24 hour Twitch marathon. And, and um, my, my friend who's a family member had passed totally understood it because that's just their culture is this is this is this is a priority this is really important this, uh, this is the, just this is as an example this is the future right so what saudi arabia and also there are a couple of uh, people actually say wow it happened like league of legend finals right league of legend finals people hundreds of millions of people actually watch the final that's equal or more than a super bowl game so imagine in the future if you're a brand and you want to advertise to something and you want to advertise to the millennials and, and this digital native, where are you going to spend your money? On Super Bowl or League of Legends final games? So if the League of Legends League of Legend final is happens in China, if it's happened in Saudi, now you're going to have hundreds of millions of people around the world going into that to watch that uh, show. So esports, esports viewership is growing very big. So where Saudi, not just Saudi, most of the countries in Asia, what we see is in Asia, Middle East, and Latin, they are focusing on gaming because they have the, the, the population, more than 50% of them are younger generation compared to like less than 30% here in North America, right? Or less than 40%. So their younger generation population is high and they know this is where the growth is. This is where the users, this is where the, the future social media, future entertainment. So it is an investment to capture that, to become not just for gaming, future of entertainment hub. Okay, so let's talk about Swarmio Media uh, for a minute. Um, and I want to go back to this part of the conversation after, uh, but just so we can sort of set the, 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 the pillars here for our audience who are new to the story, what's the high level overview, uh, the strategy, where are you going with Swarmio Media? So uh, let me kind of give you a very simple view where we are part of the whole gaming value chain, right? If you look at gaming, there's game publishers, they produce and develop the games. And there are gamers who actually play the games. And where the money is, most of the games nowadays are free. So they give, develop the game, give the games for free, and the gamers, they spend money buying in-game items, skins and diamonds, whatever they are buying. And this is a $200 billion value chain. So the, the problem here is, there are 3 billion gamers in the world, 2 billion of them, they live in Asia, Middle East, Africa, and Latin. And these 2 billion gamers, they don't have the same level of credit card access the North American and the Western Europe kids have. So their credit card penetration in some countries are less than 1%. 
So they love the game, two thirds of the gamer population, but they cannot buy any items. So if you look at the game publishers, they have all these gamers, but they cannot monetize them. So there's a value chain that's broken. So what we are doing is we actually go to these regions, Asia, Africa, Middle East, and Latin, and we partner with telecom operators. If you look at the telecom operators, the problem I saw them, they have to do something in gaming. So that is very clear. They want to get into gaming, but they just don't know this value chain is broken. But we are telling them every gamer is a customer of a telecom. You have to have a network online internet to get into the game. So they are already a customer. And in these countries, this is something that uh, North Americans don't understand. These countries, people actually pay through a telco. So they will go to a corner store, top up the phone, and using the top up dollars in the phone, they can actually pay for items. And they also use lots of e-wallet system. Most of them are owned by the telco anyways. So what we are doing is we are going to the telco with our platform and giving them, guys, let's become a partner and you give us all your user base and your payment channels and we provide this platform, bring all your gamers into this platform. We will gamify them, we will entertain them. Then we go to the publishers and say, guys, we got all these millions of people and access to them and we can monetize them, put your game, put your in-game items in our, in our platform. Now we fix the value chain. We are injecting ourselves in a legitimate way, in a proper way into the whole gaming value chain, we take a piece of that action. That's a very simple, simple model. Um, and this is very unique. If you look at it, there are lots of gaming companies trying to be on the side, trying to do whether it's tournament or events, trying to make money, but they are not in the value chain. So what we are doing is we are making the publishers make more money. So publishers and developers are making more money through us. So there's a stickiness to it. And we have the gamers. We can provide lots of value to the publishers. So we are adding value to the gamers and to the publishers with partnering with Telco, and we are taking a piece of that action. So that's a, a simple business model. Okay, so what stage are you guys at right now? Do, do you have uh, user numbers you're reporting? If I'm an investor and I'm trying to go, okay, this sounds like a really big idea. Um, you're providing uh, effectively a payment solution for um, uh, gamers in, in the developing world. How, how do I know that you guys are making progress and moving everything forward? If I'm a retail investor sort of watching the story, I look right now, it's a nine and a half, nine and a half cent stock. We see a lot of, you know, effectively bullshit companies that are public here in Canada. How do I know that this is different? You guys are actually solving a problem and there's progress being made here with this company. So the only way that you can simply, you can see who we are signing up. We have already signed up uh, the publicly announced that uh, Globe from Philippines. Globe is one of the largest telco in Southeast Asia and one of the largest in Philippines. They have 85 million subscribers. So not only subscribers, they have, uh, they own uh, an e-wallet called Gcash, which 90% of the Filipino uh, population use Gcash as a G-wallet. So that we announced. And then we also announced Orido, Orido Tunisia. It's like we are, we are Orido, they have more than 150 million subscribers in many countries. So we are started with one country, but the plan is to go to all other, other countries. And so far in our pipeline, in our sales pipeline, what uh, uh, the investors should look for is what other telcos we are signing. We are going after the largest, the biggest telcos in the world, in this region. And so far, I can comfortably say before end of this year, we will sign up and announce telcos and the names will have a total subscriber base of quarter billion users, 250 million. Think about I, we can send an invoice or charge quarter billion people. So you can just tell a t-shirt to quarter billion people if you want. We are not, but this the whole idea is we have interconnected with telcos that we have ability to process payments for quarter, quarter billion users before end of this year. So this is what I would recommend. Just watch who we are announcing as a partner and also who we are announcing as a publishing partner. So we are now, so that's the next step. So it's a three-step project. You go, three-step process. You go and get 
telcos. So we are doing it. We are actually signing big telcos and we will announce. And we get users into the platform. So we are actually working with the telcos to get the users paid. Now you go to the publishers and bring them to bring them on board. So now you should, as an investor, you would be uh, watching out what publishers we are going to announce uh, and partner with. So this is, now then you will see what we are saying. We are injecting ourselves in the middle of the whole value chain to enable publishers to monetize the gamer base. What's the staff look like? Like, like do you do you guys have uh, your own in-house developers? Um, is is there like an office that uh, if we wanted to go in uh, to see and and, and 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 I ask this and it might sound like a funny question, but when you're a small cap investor, we never really know sort of what's behind these companies. And and we've been pitched a whole bunch of deals over the last year, quote unquote tech companies, where they're really you know just a consultant who's hiring other consultants. Um, uh, that's put inside of a publicly traded vehicle. Um, how, how incentivized uh, is your staff to make this company work? Um, and uh, how and how big is that staff? What does that staff look like? So we are a 60-people uh, uh, company, and we okay. have an office in Halifax. Uh, it's in the CIBC building. Anybody in Halifax area? We are at the CIBC building, downtown Halifax, uh, fifth floor. Uh, this is uh, Halifax is our main development hub uh, because we are funded by Acova and InnovaCorp. Uh, as you know, the investors should know that our major shareholder is you know, InnovaCorp, which is a Canadian government arms length agency. So we are kind of, well, you know, we are funded initially bit by the Canadian government and the Atlantic provinces government. So that's how we started the whole company. So we have an office and our core development team is in Halifax and our management team and me and my uh, business guys are in Toronto and, and also operations guys. My operations team is in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And we have people in most of the countries in Middle East, uh, Egypt, uh, UAE, Bahrain, Tunisia, we have people in Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia. So we are globally distributed. Actually, we have 60 people in 17 different countries speaking 17 different languages. So this is where I say it's a globally distributed big operation because we are dealing with enterprise, like big enterprise, like telco is not a small. You cannot just deal with a telco. If you think about the due diligence they go through to sign before sign them, sign up is huge. We had to go through an RFP process, RFI process, gating process. They do every technical due diligence, business due diligence. They make sure that they have the technical capabilities, pilots. So telcos just don't sign up. The telco sign up process takes, the whole sale process is around six months to nine month period. That's to get there. So we have parallelly, we have been working with lots of other telcos. We are, we are ready to announce, but this work has been started three years ago to get to these telcos and get to a point that we are now announcing all these deals. So this is not overnight, you just go to a telco and get it. They go through huge uh, due diligence process to before they sign. All right, well, Vijay, it sounds like there's going to be a lot of news on the horizon here. So uh, please hop back on here as we see more developments and, and tell us what's happening. Um, uh, we're, we're certainly long the name and uh, rooting for you to be successful. I think the, the, the Canadian small cap markets need some successful stories here. It's been a pretty uh, rough couple of years with a few mining companies doing uh, well. Uh, other than that, uh, <laughs> a sea of, uh, of, of struggles. Uh, so I wish you the best of luck and uh, please keep coming back on here and updating us as uh, we get more news flow. We will, we will stay. Thank you very much for this, uh, this interview. Yeah, I would love to come back and give a more update to the to your audience. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't already, please hit the like button, subscribe and ring that notification bell and let us know what you think in the comment section. All right. Thank you, everybody.